Hi everyone and welcome to week three. Before we get started talking about what's happening this week, first of all, just an apology for the background noise in this video. I've recently moved house and I'm renovating and haven't yet set up my recording space. So that means I'm sitting uh, in my lounge room and the air conditioner is really noisy out here. Um, so apologies about that. So this week we're going to be looking at people and social technologies and how people experience social technologies as part of their everyday lives. So this is kind of the general focus for this unit across the whole semester. But this week we're going to focus right in on the people component and get thinking about how you and other people experience social technologies. I've made a bunch of learning resources available to you on the unit site and these include resources that look at um, tools for understanding people, um, including personas, which we'll be focusing on in this unit because it's the tool you'll be using for your first assignment. I've also given you resources related to how specific groups of people use or experience social technology. For example, I've given you resources related to how people with disabilities experience social technologies. And the reason I've done this is that it's important to understand that the way we experience social technology is very personal. It's about um, how we interact with technology. And that means that things like our personal histories, our preferences, our um, experience of the world actually impacts on the way that we experience technology too. So to think about how specific groups of people experience technology um, can be a really tricky thing. But there are some commonalities across groups or common characteristics that mean that people have um, similar or dissimilar experiences. I've included, for example, a report, a link to a report called Sociability, which looks at how people with disability experience social media. Um, and there's also some links there to some tools that people with particular disabilities might use as they go about using social technologies. And I'd really encourage you to have a look at um, those tools and see if you can try one out for yourself um, and get a feel for what the experience is like. This week we are jumping in again with your critical reflection activities um, and there will also be an option for a, um, a play and a share activity as well. Don't forget you need to complete a certain number of play and share activities across the semester and you can do that at any time. But if you have the time, I would recommend you do them every week because it will help you in terms of making a contribution to the learning community and help you boost your mark for assignment to your learning blog. So don't just complete your activities this week, but in addition to that, also uh, have a look at your peers' activities and make sure you are critically engaging and commenting on those. So part of the learning design in this unit, as I've mentioned before, is about the idea of a community of learners. So my expectation is that you're learning from each other as much as learning from me. And the only way you can do that is to be engaging with your peers' content as well as your own. We do have a class this Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's on campus at Gardens Point in our room in S Block. And I'll also be broadcasting it using Adobe Connect and Periscope. Now, I choose to use Adobe Connect and Periscope together for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, Periscope is not so great for interaction. It's quite hard um, to live stream in Periscope and monitor what people are saying about the video, and that means that it doesn't, it's not very interactive. Um, so what it is really good for is the audio quality is excellent. So if I'm using Periscope in the classroom, you'll probably hear your peers' questions a lot more easily than you would if I was using Adobe Connect. Um, so, and the other benefit on top of that is that you can see me and you can see what's happening in the classroom. So you don't just see the slides, instead you'll see me standing in front of the slides or sitting, given my foot is broken. Um, but you'll also see me as well as the slide content. Um, my master students really like Periscope as a way of engaging online in what's happening on campus. So I hope that it will be useful for you guys too. So I also use Adobe Connect along with Periscope to get around that issue with Periscope and lack of um, interactivity. So Adobe Connect will also be running and you'll have the slides there and you'll have the chat and you'll be able to engage with us in the classroom. 
Many of our, my master's students will run both of those at the same time. So they'll have Adobe Connect on one device and they'll have Periscope on another. And what they usually do is mute the volume on Adobe Connect so that they're hearing and seeing me um, in Periscope, but they've also got the chat and the full version of the slides there in Adobe Connect. It's completely up to you how you prefer to engage, but um, maybe have a play with both this week and see uh, which mode particularly appeals to you. In class this week, we're going to be talking about personas and we'll be doing an activity around creating a persona template. Now this will really help you with assignment one, your persona poster. So I encourage you to um, either engage in the class live or if you don't um, or if you can't come to class or prefer not to come to class, you'll also be able to complete the activity in your own time um, and you'll be able to watch the recording of the class, of course. In the second part of the lecture, we'll be talking about critical reflection in more detail. Um, and that probably sounds like a slightly boring topic, but it's really, really important. So I have co uh, compiled over the past few years with teaching this type of assignment, a whole bunch of useful resources and tips and suggestions related to critical reflection. It can get really overwhelming if I post all of these on the unit site for you all at once. Um, and I find that if I do that, students don't really engage with that material because it's overwhelming. So you just completely tune out. Um, so instead of doing that, what I wanna do is run through some basics with you in class. Um, and then I'm going to make those materials available to you um, so that you can dip back into them and talk, look at what we talked about in class. Um, so this part of the class will be fairly lecturish um, rather than really interactive um, and elements of the persona class will also be a bit lecturish. Unfortunately, by virtue of the fact that I cannot walk, it's very difficult for me to move around a classroom which makes it quite challenging to run a workshop. Um, so I'll be uh, focusing on, I'll be a bit more lecturish I guess in the next couple of classes while I um, am getting my foot back together and, and being able to get back on my feet. The advantage of things being a bit more lecturish is that they will work well online. So those of you who want to come online will be able to engage fully in the class. Um, there might be some times where um, people are reporting back in the class where the audio quality isn't awesome, but we'll certainly do our very best to capture that for the online students. Um, when it comes to the recording, what I usually do when I'm editing down a workshop recording is I take out all the spaces so that um, the times when we're paused and doing an activity, um, you don't have to sit there through 15 minutes of background noise. Um, so I will edit those portions out for you. And the discrete parts of the lecture, I will split up where possible. So I'll try and split off the critical reflection content from the uh, persona content, for example. So this week's class is a very important one because it's setting you up for both assignment one and assignment two. So just, I probably sound like a crack record, but just to reiterate, this week's material is important that for the stuff we're covering in class um, and the stuff that's available on the site. And you really can't do one and not the other. You need to engage with all of it this week. Okay, so other things that are going on on the unit site this week. The first big one is that your critical reflection for uh, assignment two, your very first one on the Channel U topic and your online identity is due this coming Sunday, end of week three. Uh, at the moment, Anna has been going through the site and commenting on any um, critical reflections that she's seen posted for this topic to give you all a bit of feedback and to help you um, improve and tailor your posts so that you can get the best possible mark and also, more importantly, that um, so that you can reflect meaningfully on your own uh, online identity, which will help you in lots of different ways and most specifically it'll help you with developing your persona. So please take Anna's feedback on board and keep in mind that you are very, very welcome to update your post. So you can update and edit your post in this unit right up till we get to the um, submission point where we're marking your first post at mid-semester and all the information about those dates is available on the schedule page. So um, take a look at Anna's comments, take a look at the comments she's made on your posts, but also take a look at the comments she's made on your peers' posts to help you with gauging where your post should sit. Now I will also be jumping in and doing some feedback on the posts that come in over the next week, um, so stay tuned for more feedback there. 
As we progress through the week and more posts become available, we'll be featuring um, great posts on the homepage so that you can look at your peers' posts and get a sense for what we think constitutes a great post. In addition to that, I'll be making available some examples of really good blog posts from last year. They won't necessarily be on the topic of personal identity, but rather um, topics that we covered across the whole semester to help you get a feel for what um, you know, a HD, a high distinction worthy blog post looks like. Also on the unit site this week, many of you still haven't introduced yourselves, so please get in and do that. The prompts for that introduction are available in a blog post I put up over the weekend and I'll also link to that post from the week three uh, activity page so you can go back from there and complete that introduction. The foundation of a learning community is about personal connections and one of the things we're going to talk about when we look at communities and networks is the power of personal disclosure. Now you might be wondering why I've asked you to comment on something fun you did on the weekend in your intro post um, and I've done that really deliberately. The reason is that personal disclosure helps to form connections and, uh, or meaningful connections and to build relationships within networks. So by asking you to reveal something small about yourself that isn't personal or private, I've created um, an opportunity for you to connect with each other around something that you're potentially both interested in. So that was very deliberate and there is definitely a reason for it. So please get in there and do that introduction and make sure you respond to all of the prompts. And you can see then how those um, prompts allow people to kind of make connections around things that they both like or they both dislike and so forth. It can be quite difficult to um, form connections in an online community where the content is really kind of corporatized or um, very academic in focus and without an injection of personality. So we've been quite deliberate with this activity. Just a reminder that you can find everything you need to know about week three on the week three page. And if you found this video, chances are you're already um, on the week three page. But the week three page will link you through to the learning resources for our main topic this week, uh, people and social technology. It will link you through to the class uh, content, so information about where the class is and what we're covering. Um, on that same page, I'll be posting the recording of class as well. And there's also a um, asynchronous version of the persona activity that we'll be doing in class. Also on the week one page, you'll find a link to some more critical reflection resources um, that I'll be posting after our class on Friday. So. Um, in fact, I might make them available beforehand, but you don't need to worry about reading them until after class on Friday. Also on that page, I will make a quick summary of things that are due for this week. So things like completing the class poll, completing the social technologies uh, use survey, and the activity that you have got due uh, this Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So um, if in any doubt at any stage about what we're doing in a given week or what you've got due, just head straight to that week's page, which you can access under weekly learning uh, resources, and you'll find all the information you need there. Okay, so that is it for me for this week. I'll be seeing you around the unit site, and I'll also be seeing many of you in class on Friday, both online or on campus. Um, I hope you have a great week. If you've got any questions as you're working through the learning resources this week, please don't hesitate to ask them by posting in the activity feed or for anything more personal, please shoot me an email. Have a good week, guys.